Times verlieh ihm den Ehrentitel Dr. Ecstasy. Herzlich willkommen, Sascha Schulgin. Well, thank you. It's a great privilege to be here today. I enjoy this most thoroughly. Uh, I learned quite a bit from Ralph's talk just now, and it changes the way I have to present my, my, my talk. I believe the talk was entitled something like The Activity of Psychedelic Drugs in the Future, or something of that type. And Ralph explained that if you knew what the future was, then you don't need to wait for the future because you have the present. And so, if you know what is going to be active in the future, you know it now. So I can't tell you what's going to be active in the future, I, don't, I can't predict. But I can tell you what's active now and what might be looked for in the future, and I think that's probably uh, the better title I should have. Um, the, uh, the materials we have now that we know to be active, some, not, not all are publicly known, not all are, are, have, been, have been published. I gave an example of one a couple of days ago in one of the uh, sessions in the um, Montreal room in which I talked about a compound called 5-methoxydult. I, I have a feeling that some of the polysyllabic words I'm going to be using might go slowly into German. I apologize, uh, but I'm going to rattle on. Anyway, 5-methoxydialyltryptamine um, is an interesting compound. I first... Woo! <laughs> I first synthesized it a while ago. And I, I had a request from a, a person by the name of Merple, who has a website on the East Coast, uh, to ask, he asked me, what are you working on now? And I said, well, I just, just wrote an article for the third, a, a commentary for the, for the third book on 5-methoxydalt. So, whoa, what's that? I said, well, that's the dialyl tryptamine. Oh, okay. So what I did, I sent him a Xerox copy or a, 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 a copy of the commentary for the new third book that described this compound. It's not known in the literature. It's a new compound. It's active at 10, 12 milligrams, orally active. And uh, he put it on his website, which I didn't know because I don't look at his website. But he wrote me afterwards about a week later saying, I put it on, on, on my website and then I thought that wasn't very cool, so I took it off my website. So this tells a little bit about the, the present and the future kind of coming together. It had been on his website for, for one week, and three weeks after he took it off of his website, the material having been made in China, made it to the United States by way of uh, Holland. Namely, an unknown compound exposed in the, in the, to the public for, for six or seven days, actually served as, the, the, the method synthesis was there, served as a stimulation to the, uh, I guess legal in China, I, can't, I don't know what the laws are there, heaven's sakes, I don't know, uh, allowed it to be synthesized there and then moved into Europe and then moved to the United States in three weeks. It is still not in the, in the chemical literature. I've never published a paper describing it, it's not in chem abstracts. So you have an interesting case here of a material that is a psychedelic drug and it is available but nothing is known about it because there's nothing been published about it. It's an interesting aspect of the future, the present, that I find to be fascinating. Um, another example is a work that had been talked about some by David Nichols, his, his uh, group in Purdue had developed a, material, a number of materials called flies. Uh, there's the uh, uh, fly is basically two, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how you translate hand waving, Two furan, dihydrofuran rings on either side of a, of a ring with, a, with a comp, something down here and a chain up there. And the chain is two carbons, it's a phenethylamine, it's three carbons, amphetamine. I love, I love chemical structures, I call them dirty pictures, uh, by, with blackboards, but I have to use my hands and you're going to have to put up with it. Uh, anyway, the um, material was a dihydro, di, dihydrofuran compound with a bromine down in, down in this bottom part of the molecule and a, and, a, um, and a two carbon chain up at the top making the phenethylamine. It was called 2CB uh, two fly. It was published some 
few years ago by uh, Dr. Nichols and his group in, in Purdue. And uh, I have explored it with my wife uh, at levels of 8 to 10 milligrams. Extraordinarily short-lived, very, very uh, pleasant, quite erotic, uh, no, no hangover, no after effects. It, uh, I, it was a very, very satisfactory compound. But is it a compound of the future or of the present? Is again, the situation is, I don't know how to define the, now the future action of compounds of which I already know the action, because that's present. And if I don't know the action, I can't talk about what they will do. So I, I, I'm in this interesting twilight area of how to address this question. So having taken those things that will be interesting in the future that are known now, let me kind of round out to things that have, are not known now, but will be known in the future. One of the very interesting aspects I'm working on right now is a series of compounds known as five ETOs. Uh, it's interesting to know how long it will take this to get in the literature because only the parent compound is in the literature. These are five ethoxytryptamines. Everyone here, I'm sure, at one level or another knows about uh, five methoxytryptamines, five MEO, DMT, DIPT, DAPT, DET, MIPT, all with a five methoxy group. And they're all in the literature, they're all in the, in the um, uh, uh, chemical scientific literature. But the compounds with, instead of a methoxy, an ethoxy over here, a three, two carbon chain instead of a one carbon chain, uh, are not, none of those uh, substituted uh, tryptamines are in the literature. So here's a case where there's not a single known compound. They have never been made. I'm in the process of making them. I'm in sort of an amide in between stage of making them. But I have, in my own experience, every confidence that they're all going to be active compounds. So how do I talk about them? I can tell you what their structures are. I can tell you how I'm making them. But I can't tell you what their action is because they're not yet been explored. If I do make them, I, I intend to make them. I've been diverted by a book I'm writing in, in between, but I, I, uh, my laboratory work is going to start up again in this particular area. If I do make them, do I publish them? Of course. But if I publish them, and if I pu publish them in a book like P. Call or T. Call, with, along with Anne, if I publish in a book, the book is by definition fiction. So, the, uh, for example, P. Call and T. Call, I sent them to chem abstracts because of all the chemistry in the latter half of the two books. Uh, they didn't put any of it in chem abstracts because it's fictional. They put it fact. So it's an interesting twilight there of, of um, the uh, distinction of the present, the past, the future. Uh, fact, fiction, is it real? Uh, I've been talking to a number of people here at, at the meeting. There have been people coming up to me saying, you know if you put a Hoosie group at this position, instead of that position, you have a compound that's twice as active. Oh, that's fascinating. Uh, uh, may I use your name? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, I just soon not be identified with the compound. What are you supposed to do with this kind of information? I would like to put it in a book, put it in a paper, maybe put it in a review article of some kind, but I can't document it because the person who invented it chooses not to be identified with it. Therefore, it's anonymous. Well, it's maybe not even real. There's no way of pursuing and documenting the thing because you can't put a tangible identifier on it. So on that basis, I will talk a little bit about the five ethoxytryptamines, a beautiful collection of compounds. Haven't been made yet, but that's all right. Um, a beautiful collection of compounds. You have the 5-methoxy-DMT and the 5-ethoxy-DMT, I should say. It's the 5-methoxy is well known, but the 5-ethoxy is not. Uh, and that can be easily made by running a couple of, of, form, uh, form out of uh, formic acid ester things and reducing with hydride. Uh, the diethyl compounds are probably best made by uh, taking the 5 ethyl. Oh, first of all, 5 ethoxy tryptamine itself is not a commercially available item. It can be made from serotonin by blocking uh, something down here with, with uh, uh, a, a blocking agent on the mean group. So you can go over to the to the phenolic group and put an ethyl ether on there, then unblock the the uh, amine group, and then start putting goodies on on the on the nitrogen. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you know, 